What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my first impression and analysis of the Flame Tribe banner. And the first unit, to my surprise, is uh, Flame Lin. So she is a Lance Infantry unit this time around, and she's easily one of the star of this banner because of the stacked base kit that she comes with. So her preferred weapon is Firelight Lance, which gives her minus one special cooldown. She can also get plus five to all of her stats in combat, and she can also deal true damage based on 15% of foe's attack. So getting that true damage is definitely pretty good for the damage output. And if she's got four or more speed than the opponent, then she can inflict the guard effect on them in combat. So that is really good defensively. And finally, she can give herself and the allies within four spaces the one cooldown special spiral after the combat if she's above the HP threshold. So this is going to be helping her loop her godlike reflexes special. And this can also be really helpful to any kind of ally for just pre-charging their special. So we have seen this kind of effect before on Sword's Weapon Refine. So it's not exactly too unique, but here she definitely makes a pretty good use of it for just looping her special. And it's also a pretty good support. She comes with a new special in Godlike Reflexes, which I highly think that is probably going to be inheritable like Vital Astra, because Lin already has her exclusive slotty skill here, so I think this could be inheritable to just the melee infantry units. We'll definitely have to wait and see for the data mine. So Godlike Reflexes is a 3 cooldown special, which only works if you've got 4 or more speed than the opponent, so this does have a speed check. And unless you meet the speed check, the special is going to be doing nothing. So it's really important to put the special on fast units. And Lin here is pretty fast, especially with that speed smoke 4. So if you meet that speed check, and if the special is ready, or if unit special gets triggered in the combat, then she can deal damage based on 15% of her speed. And she also reduces damage from foe's attack by 40%. So this is really good as a hybrid special that we have been seeing now I guess with Brave Violet. So this special is not going to be pierceable by Deadeye and Lethality unlike uh, Vital Astra which we have seen before. So this is really good for taking on those kinds of opponents but still keep in mind that Legendary Nana is going to be able to pierce through the special and the damage output is not going to be as much as Vital Astra but still it's pretty good and especially Lin can get the true damage out of her slotty skill and her weapon so she's still going to be having a pretty good damage output and the 40% damage reduction out of this kind of defensive special is definitely pretty good for a fast frontliner, especially someone like Lin. So I really hope that this is inheritable. This is definitely going to be a pretty fun special for a lot of faster units. And then she has got her exclusive slotty skill in Verdict of Sake. So this is essentially a better finish skill because it does provide you with the plus 5 true damage and also the in combat 7 HP healing if your special is ready or if your special is triggered before or during the combat. So that's why I say it's a better finish skill. And triggering this skill is going to be pretty easy because you just need to be within 4 spaces of an ally. And then she can get up to like plus 12 to all of her stats if she's got 2 allies within 4 spaces. So that is incredible for just making her a big ball of stats, especially with her weapon and the damage reduction that she gets out of her special. The only thing that she's going to be missing is going to be null follow up. But still nowadays we do have easier ways of getting null follow up with Fallen Lilith and infantry null follow up from Ascended Celica and then Infantry Speed Tactic from Brave Chrome, for example. So Null Follow-Up could be given to her, and then she could function as a really good uh, melee specialist with this kind of slotty skill, just giving her a lot of stats and also healing and true damage. And she comes with Shield Pulse 3, which does have good synergy with her special for pre-charging it. And then finally, she has got Speed Smoke 4. So Speed Smoke 4 can stack up with the damage reduction of her special, but keep in mind that the damage reduction you get out of Speed Smoke 4 is going to be pierceable by Deadeye and Lethality. This is a really good skill so that she can be even more bulky and also have an easier time getting the speed check for her special. Even though Lena is not the harmonic unit or the duo unit of this banner, she is extremely powerful and we do not have a lot of Lance Infantry units which fit in this kind of category. And she's also a new gen unit which means that she can easily reach 190 BST so she can be a huge stat ball and her weapon and exclusive slot skill is amazing. And this special is really good for her and she can use this really well because of having the special spiral in her weapon essentially and she can loop this special after she counter attacks. So after the combat she's able to get that one cooldown and then just have the special ready once again. 
So for her stats, I think she's going to be having something similar to this. So she's going to be having pretty high base speed, which is needed with this kind of special. And she's also going to be having good attack stat at base 40 and also good bulk overall with 36 defense and 30 resistance. That's pretty much the ballpark of what I'm expecting out of Lin because she's kind of like how we have sword infantry units, uh, you know, with high speed and damage reduction and everything. But she's a lance unit with that, which is not really all that crowded compared to the sword infantries. So yeah, Lin is definitely the highlight of this banner along with the harmonic unit that we have. And the next unit that we have is going to be Flame Muspel. So Summer Niffle got released and Muspel thought he's not going to be holding anything back. And he's also a colorless uh, cavalry dragon just like her. So Muspel has got Breath of Flame as his preferred weapon. So this weapon gives him minus one special cooldown and it also has time pulse built into it. So he can easily pre-charge two cooldown specials like Moonbow and Glimmer. And he essentially has the Spendthrift effect which can inflict minus six attack on the foe during the combat and gives him the plus six attack in combat. And he can also pierce through the damage reduction skills and half them similar to dual lift. So for example, if he faces any kind of opponent uh, with 40% damage reduction, he can just cut that by 50% and instead the opponent is going to be having 20% damage reduction. So it does not completely neutralize the damage reduction skills, just halves them essentially, which is still pretty good. So unlike the original Muspel, he's going to be missing out on the Fatal Smoke. But combat wise, this Muspel is definitely much much better because he also has guaranteed follow-up attack in his weapon. So he can double a lot easily compared to the original Muspel. He does have Moonbow which does have good synergy with his weapon for pre-charging it. He has attack defense catch 4 and a new tier 4 slot B skill in Dragon Strat 4. So this is definitely an upgrade from Dragon Strat 3 which is only present on Halloween Sothis. So now the skill functions in both phases. Previously it was locked to enemy phase and it also goes from 20% to 25%. So you can reduce the damage from foe's first attack by 25% and if you've got more attack than foe's resistance, then you can deal damage based on 25% of your attack minus opponent's resistance. So that true damage is definitely pretty good and the damage reduction is going to be helping a ton, especially when you can just one shot the opponents, um, especially for someone like Muspel. And this is going to be the skill to give to a lot of dragons for arena scoring because it's much better than Chill Defense Resistance 3 which we had before and run Distant Counter Sacred Seal to score a lot higher in Arena. So this is going to be a very solid skill for a lot of dragons, especially if they can have the follow-up attack in their weapon. Um, and then he's got Domain of Flame, which we have seen before on the original Muspel as well. Definitely pretty nice for support, but this Muspel himself is also much better in combat with this Breath of Flame effect and also having the Pre-Charge Special. I can definitely see him being used in something like Aetherate's defense a lot more now because he himself has better combat. So yeah, that is uh, definitely pretty fantastic. As for stat spread, I think he's going to be having pretty similar to the, what like original Muspel has got, just having more points um, because he is going to be having 179 BST because he's a new gen unit. So that is going to be Muspel, definitely a pretty fantastic unit, provides good support and also is pretty good in combat. And then we have the 4 star focus unit of this banner and uh, Flame Tribe is what this banner is based on. So she's the demote unit on her own banner and she's a sword infantry unit. So she could function pretty well actually because of this weapon, Flame Gunbai. And uh, this is actually one of the better inheritable swords that we have. Coral Saber Plus is also really good, but this weapon is also pretty good defensively. So it can give you plus 5 attack and defense in combat, and it also inflicts penalty on foes attack and defense in combat based on 20% of unit's defense. Now keep in mind that this is going to be counting the visible defense because it says at start of combat. So the higher visible defense that you have, the better it is going to be. And Rinka honestly is going to be having pretty high um, visible defense from what I calculated. So she's going to be having anywhere from 40 to 44 uh, visible defense, which is definitely pretty nice. And she's also going to be pretty fast, but unfortunately she doesn't have a preferred weapon, uh, which is going to be a bit troublesome, especially in this category. But still, it's a really good inheritable weapon. And she can also provide you Odd Tempest as a 4 star focus unit, which is really amazing. And attack speed ideal 3 is also not that bad if you want to get the tier 4 version of the skill and anything else that is premium um, because it is going to be easier to plus and merge her compared to the 
other units present on this banner. So that is going to be Rinka and her Flame Tribe. I definitely like her art quite a lot, honestly. And then we have the final unit of this banner. And they are the essentially the star of this banner, I guess. But I think Lin and, you know, Tana are both the stars because of how they function in the combat. So Harmonic Tana here as a green dagger flyer. Uh, I definitely didn't think they would pair up Peony with Tana. But still, uh, let's wait for the Harmonic conversation and see what they have to say. So their weapon is Kinling Taiko, which gives them minus one special cooldown. And at start of turn, they can give Kanto one buff to herself and allies within two spaces. So keep in mind that this is a visible buff and you can just give this at start of combat, which is absolutely amazing. Keep in mind that Kanto does not stack up. So the highest value of Kanto is going to be applied and you can also give, you know, Kanto 1 to your infantry units as well, which is pretty amazing. Now keep in mind that this is flat Kanto, so even after teleporting, you're still going to be having one Kanto um, to use, which is really good. And then she can get plus 6 attack and speed in combat and also has partial null follow up to bypass any kind of follow up negation effects, which can make her use wind sweep much better. And if she's going to be facing any kind of non-red opponent, then she can get more attack in combat based on 20% of her visible attack stat. And she can also inflict debuff on foe's attack depending on 20% of their visible attack stat. Again, both of these are going to be visible attack checks because it does say at start of combat. So actually giving her something like life and death or fury is not that bad because it does increase your visible attack. But of course, you're going to be reducing her bulk if you do give her life and death. Um, so this weapon is nice, I guess, for dealing with Brave Hector and Ascended Edun. Um, the two most common blue far safe tanks. So she's going to be able to get a lot more attack against them. And she's also going to be able to debuff their attack and hopefully survive. She does have wind sweep, which is going to be helping her against Brave Hector. And against the non-red opponents, she can definitely deceptively hit hard because of getting the extra attack in combat and also debuffing their attack. So it's a bit easier for her to survive things. Um, but still at times, units can just hit so hard with their specials that she's often going to be dying in a single hit if she's not going to be running wind sweep. So wind sweep is definitely pretty nice here. And she does have attack speed catch four. And she also has speed defense hold, which is just an upgrade of the rain skill and has three space range. So that is pretty amazing for any kind of offensive and fast flyer. So she is the harmonic unit of this patch and I don't think she is too insane. I mean, she's definitely pretty solid and definitely has a lot of potential, especially with how she can target the non-red foes and get those things in combat. Uh, but I wouldn't really say that she's going to be insane as far as um, the dual units and harmonic units go. You can actually see the icon of the Kanto 1 visible on Tana here. So it is a visible buff that she can give. So honestly, it's going to be pretty helpful to a lot of Gale Force teams and Aether Raids. Uh, just giving them the Kanto so that they can space better or even just trap the opponent's units. And giving that kind of Kanto buff to everyone is really good. And she herself can run Disarm Trap and run the Double Fury build to function as a Gale Force initiator. And her harmonic skill definitely goes well with this kind of playstyle because uh, we have Peony so she can just provide the dance to the ally with the highest HP from Heroes and Sacred Stones. So that refresh is definitely pretty nice um, and can help her in the Gale Force teams in Aether Raid's offense. And it's going to be a bit easier to trigger this harmonic skill in a Gale Force team where you can just kill their duo units or even snipe their duo hindrance. But you of course have to watch out for Kanto Control. So yeah, Kanto Control just aging to be better as time goes on, especially against these range units with uh, Kanto 1. So we see their duo skill in action and they just refresh Triandra. So you can just refresh duo Peony and Peony herself, which is pretty good. And Heroes, of course, does have some really strong units. So that refresh is going to be good for the harmonic skill. And the Tempest Trial unit from this banner is going to be Mordecai. He's a green beast infantry unit this time. And he has got Smite, Fortress Defense Rest 2 and Attack Defense Gap in his base kit. So we have seen before, um, you know, this Fortress Defense Rest on Sonia. And we haven't really got any kind of Attack Defense Gap on a Grill unit. So that is definitely a new skill. 
And his weapon, Fury Fang, is also a pretty good weapon, so Mordecai honestly looks like a pretty good unit. Because with this weapon, he can get plus 3 defense, and he can also get plus 6 attack and defense in combat. And just like Rinka's weapon, he also has the same condition where he can debuff the opponent's attack and defense based on 20% of his visible defense. So Mordecai is definitely going to be having high visible defense, which is going to be resulting into a lot of attack and defense debuff on the opponent. And there's no cap for this debuff, honestly. If you can stack up Mordecai's defense up to 50, which I think is going to be pretty easy to do, then you can easily get like minus 10 attack and defense debuff on opponent during the combat. And he also has follow-up negation built into his weapon, which is really good defensively. And then finally, he does have the standard infantry piece transformation, which can give him the tempo effect. So Mordecai is basically going to be the best Grail unit for arena investment for a lot of free to play players because he is a new gen infantry unit which means that after the first merge he can hit 190 BST and that is pretty good with this kind of weapon especially that can give you a lot of in combat debuffs. So definitely a pretty solid free to play unit and of course I'm going to be covering him in a full review when we get his stats. He's probably going to be having high defense, attack and then low speed so we can tell that much. Uh, but still, definitely a pretty solid infantry unit and a pretty solid free to play unit. So I'm definitely pretty happy with how we got a really solid Tempest Child unit at the start of this gen. Overall, this banner is going to be passable by a lot of people, but Lin and Tana are going to be worth a spark if you really like them. Especially Lin, honestly. On I like her a lot more than Tana on this banner because of how she can function in the combat and especially with her exclusive slotty skill. So they could be worth a spark if you really like them a lot, but you can definitely pass up on this banner and definitely wait because this banner is going to be lasting for a month. So that can always be done. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure you leave a like and a comment. Helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you can always support me directly by using super thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more fave videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Tana's weapon against red opponents. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.